Last week was Steve Reich's birthday. Happy birthday, Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. I thought we could look at a favourite piece of ours, clapping music, written in 1972. Long-time fans of the pod may have heard it under several of our introductions. One of the world's foremost living composers, Steve-O was a pioneer of the 20th century musical movement Minimalism. Although I don't think he's ever actually identified as a minimalist. Minimalism doesn't mean they're making very small music, does it? Sorry, Tim, I've given you the idiot line there. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. Although I'd like to hear more miniaturism. Minimalism has two broad trends. Developing music from small cells of material a feature it shares with many other genres. And it also has this very cool feature which is all its own. Minimalist music is non-teleological, mm. which is a concept best explained through reference to the 2006 Pixar animation Cars. Right. In Cars, Lightning McQueen, voiced by the idiosyncratically nosed Owen Wilson, is a race car wrapped up in his achievements winning races and collecting prizes. Through a series of hilarious misadventures, he ends up in a nondescript flyover state. Thanks to some friendly locals, Lightning McQueen realises it's not all about the destination. It's about the friends he make along the way. It's about the journey. Steve Reich's music is all about the journey, not the destination. Steve Reich is Lightning McQueen, and Owen Wilson could play them both. Wow. Reich's music is not end-orientated. The music doesn't go from a beginning, past moment, to a future, end moment. Instead, we dwell in a single state of the present, meditating upon it and examining it from every angle. Right. Obtuse. (laughs) Both of these features are combined in clapping music. A very small cell is heard, one bar of music in 12-8. The fact it's in that time signature is important. The cell is performed on the most minimalist of all instruments, our hands. If he was a true purist, we'd hear the sound of one hand clapping instead, which sounds like this. I'm pretty happy with that. And then, whilst one performer continues with the original pattern, the cell is presented in every possible iteration by the other clapper. How do we hear different versions, then? It's through a technique called phasing. And that sounds a bit Star Trek related to me. It isn't, but let's make it. Take a sequence of items. Let's say Star Trek captains. Make it so, Mr. LaForge. I'm the captain! You are not in control here anymore. You look like crap, Jim. And then number them one, two, three, four. Take number one and put it to the back of the queue. I'm the captain! You are not in control here anymore. You look like crap, Jim. Make it so, Mr. LaForge. Now you've got two, three, four, one. Then take two to the back. You are not in control here anymore. You look like crap, Jim. Make it so, Mr. LaForge. I'm the captain! Three, four, one, two. That's what Reich does with all 12 of the quavers in the bar. The first quaver becomes the last in the sequence, and everything jumps up one place in the queue, and a new rhythm is created as a result. Listen here to our version with added pitches for a bit of extra clarity. The original first beat is the highest pitch. Add that to the original clapping part, and you've got quite a trendy set of phases. So, tell me, why is this non-teleological? Well, that sequence could just keep on rolling forever. There's no sense of it ending. It could still be going on now. We just dwell on it as it exists kind of outside of time. It's mathematically perfect complete, and could keep rotating forever on a minimum of material and pattern. I really like it as an expression of minimalism because even though there are great big minimalist mega works for huge orchestras and often quite a lot of vibraphones, this micro masterpiece has been boiled down to its very essence. Reduced like a jus. Exactly. Every single part of it is minimalist. But in a way, that creates a contradiction. This piece that is all about an ongoing journey is arguably the end point of minimalism. It couldn't be reduced further. It's the point of minimalist perfection. It's a modern gem. Just like Owen Wilson. Daunted by the prodigious output of other composers. Wow, seven projects. 
Steve Reich was struggling against the teleological musical establishment. He's crazy as a road lizard. He faced rejection at every turn. God damn, damn it! But with a little help from Eastern philosophy and his composer friends, he realizes it's not about where you're going, but the fun you can have along the way. Wow. With Patrick Stewart as Michael Nyman. On a beach! And Jack Black as John Adams. Dude, you are cool. The way you play. This summer, Owen Wilson has got the Reich stuff. Come on, stop, please. It's embarrassing.